Hello, we would like to welcome you on our online press conference dedicated to Robotization Barometer 2020. Robotization Barometer is a survey we have conducted in Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland and Romania earlier this year with approximately 900 respondents. The method that we have used for this survey is uh, CATI. First, let me introduce you our main speaker, Slavoj Musilek, who is a general manager for Hello. CEE. We would like to welcome you on our online... For CEE, uh, Russia and CIS countries. Slavoj will present you the outcome of the robotization barometer survey, which will be followed by short videos summarizing the country highlights. Uh, after that, there will be a space for your questions that should be related to entire CEE region. If you will have any questions related to a specific countries, please forward them to the agency located in the countries and they will answer the questions for you. So, Slavoj, please start with the presentation. Thank you, Pavel. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have this uh, press conference. Uh, so, uh, let me to go quickly through the outcomes of the uh, survey that Pavel has mentioned. Uh, the survey has been performed by SCNC Research and uh, uh, ASM research company. Uh, we had almost 900 small and medium companies being interviewed and providing their data and their opinions about the robotizations and their plans towards robotization. Uh, small and medium means uh, companies below 250 employees. So small, it's below 50, and medium are uh, below 250. First outcome that uh, I would like to share is, uh, uh, let's say, I think positive, positive message that almost one third of the, of the respondents are already considering and planning robotization of their production processes within the next three years. Uh, the factors that are driving this, uh, those plans and considerations for robotization of the, of the production processes is uh, need for uh, cost optimization of the, of the production, improvement of efficiency, and increasing the competitiveness of, of small and medium companies across uh, four, four countries we have, we have involved into the research. Uh, percentage of the, of the companies that we have interviewed considering the uh, uh, considering robotization of their processes in the next three years is more or less equal uh, in all four countries, uh, Poland is, is showing uh, slightly higher demand than, the, than Hungary, Romania and Czech Republic. What, what, what is the uh, interesting outcome of the, of the survey and it's basically confirming our, our observations from the market and also other in, uh, independent studies like for example uh, International Federation of Robotics reports that uh, collaborative robot markets is, is growing uh, faster than uh, market of traditional industrial robots. And as you can see, uh, the demand for, uh, for implementation or robotization of collaborative rob using collaborative robots is higher than uh, we have been showing in the, in the previous slides. Current level of robotization uh, across the interviewed companies uh, is, uh, let's say, more close uh, to each other between Czech Republic and Poland, where uh, current level of robotization in uh, Romania and Hungary is, uh, let's say, at half of, of uh, current situation in Czech, uh, in Czech Republic and Poland. Uh, as, as I have mentioned, uh, the, the outcomes of the survey are confirming that uh, robots are already well adopted in the production processes of, of manufacturing companies in CEE, especially at the, at the SME, SME 
uh, size of companies and collaborative robots are quickly increasing their share in the, in the entire robotics market. Another interesting outcome of the research is that uh, small and medium companies that are already utilizing robots uh, in their production, in their production and their shop floor are very open and are planning to continue with the robotization while uh, the, the, the companies that are not using robots yet they are still having some hesitations to, to implement uh, robots and, and uh, collaborative robots or small automation as a part of their, as a part of their strategy. The factors that are uh, mostly influencing small and medium uh, companies in uh, Central East Europe are very, let's say, common. Uh, basically, four, four key takeaways is that, uh, first of all, it's definitely uh, lowering the production costs, increasing the production efficiency, uh, quality, focus on quality, increasing, increasing quality and increasing the competitiveness of those companies on the local and also on the global markets. While another uh, factors that were mentioned during the, during the study or during the research is uh, face, uh, addressing challenges with the workforce, uh, flexi need, needed flexibility of the production. Uh, I have to, I have to mention one important thing, this survey has been performed between November 2019 and April uh, 2020, which means that those outcomes are still not being influenced by the COVID situation. So if the, if the research will be done today, uh, I believe uh, the, the will or planning plan of the, of the small medium customers uh, related to the robotization, the, the numbers will be will be much higher because currently what we see on the on the SME market is that those those guys are really considering seriously or reconsidering their strategy and looking for opportunities how to increase their efficiency, how to how to address in much uh, uh, let's say focused way or st more structured way uh, the challenges that are coming with a need for flexibility of the production. Uh, efficiency and uh, yeah, stay, staying competitive on, on in our in current challenging environment. Uh, I would like to summarize right now uh, two areas. One is uh, related to the processes that uh, small and medium companies in our region are considering to uh, to prioritize or to, to to automate first using robots or collaborative robots. Uh, uh, it's basically three types of applications, assembly, packaging and palletizing. In Czech Republic, uh, we see really the con confirmation of the trend, uh, assembly, palletizing, packaging and machine tending are the hot topics that uh, small and medium customers are considering to, to robotize first. In Hungary, uh, we see more or less the same trend. Uh, what is interesting our outcome out of the out of the Hungary? It's the high portion of the applications that are in the survey mentioned that others, which we can explain as a uh, as an outcome of the fact that uh, that those companies are considering or really planning to automate their processes with the, with the robots or collaborative robots, but at the moment they, have, they don't have a clear strategy what, which type of applications they need to focus on first. Uh, Poland, oh, so, sorry, Romania, uh, again, we see a need for assembly or priority for, uh, for assembly and palletizing packaging. And in Poland, uh, Basically, we see, we see a very, very consistent uh, outcome comparing to the other countries. Industries, 
where we see the highest demand for robotization in the, uh, among the small and medium companies, uh, food and beverage, uh, build, building materials, uh, supply or production in Czech Republic, in, in Hungary, uh, paper production and printing companies, again building materials production, um, and metal, metal uh, processing and machining. In Romania, more or less the same consist consistent outcomes. Poland, consist consistent more or less with the, with the other countries, which shows that all the countries in the uh, in the Central and Eastern Europe are basically facing the same challenges and across the industries and uh, the outcome of the survey is very consistent between those four countries with very little differences. <coughs> uh, very frequently uh, uh, mentioned hot topic for small and medium customers is, is payback period or return of investments. Uh, expectations, uh, little difference between, uh, between four countries. In Poland, we see much higher demand for the fast payback in the period of one or two year max. Uh, while in Czech Republic, Hungary and Romania, uh, customers are considering that the payment pay payback period or return of investment uh, between two and three years is still very well very well acceptable for them. Uh, for 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 me or for us, the those those outcomes of the of the survey are, are really interesting because we see on one side uh, really increasing demand for robotization at the at the market of small and medium companies, uh, while still number of entrepreneurs or owner of, of those companies are somehow hesitating to, to utilize this technology for increasing their competitiveness or their efficiency. So, so we take it as our responsibility as a market leader and pioneer in collaborative robotics to continue education of the, of the market and helping uh, small and medium companies across Central and Eastern Europe to really understand the benefits that collaborative robots can bring to their production and how we can help them to become more successful in uh, challenging and, and highly competitive market that is, as I have mentioned, also influenced and it's ch changing rapidly based on the COVID experience. So uh, we, t we, 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 we continue with this uh, focus on helping customers across the industries and all the sizes and especially small and mediums to really utilize the new technologies like collaborative robots to, to, to stay or to become more competitive on the local and global market. Thank you. I think that's all from my side right now and I will hand over back to Pavel. Uh, we should now follow with the country highlights uh, from all countries, so from Czech Republic, Poland, Hungary, and uh, Romania. Our 2020 robotization survey conducted among small and medium companies in the Czech Republic confirmed what we are experiencing every day on the market while visiting our customers. Czech Republic is among the leading countries when it comes to robots per capita criteria, but most of those robots are installed in the automotive companies of the larger scale. The levels of automation in the non-automotive sector or in a smaller companies is only a little bit higher than one-tenth of the nation's average. But small and medium enterprises, they exist in the same environment and they are facing exactly the same challenges as those big ones. All of them see the automation as the fastest way towards higher efficiency and competitiveness. Therefore, there is no surprise that about 25% of those small and medium companies plan to implement robot in next three years. And about one fourth of those companies is already decided that their next robot will be collaborative. 
I would like to point out three interesting facts of this survey regarding Hungarian companies. The first one that one of four small and medium-sized companies are planning robotization within the next three years. Close to 23% of small businesses would like to implement Cobot, while this number is 21% at medium-sized companies. This shows me that these companies are looking for effective solution when they, where they can combine robots and humans at the workplace. Another very interesting point is regarding return of investment. 22% of the companies are looking for the return of investment periods within one or two years. Naturally, interpreters would like to have this period as short as possible. And at UR, we have experience when this ROI period was shortened than one year. The third very interesting information for me was that how the companies are see their barriers when they are thinking about robotization. More than 47% of small and medium-sized companies believe that their production not require robotization. Almost 45% of them think that their application even cannot be robotized. We at UR believe that with our cobots, we can automatize almost everything. These points drive me to the conclusion that most of the decision makers need to make a big step ahead for robotization and they see cobots as a great option to start with. Robotization barometer data is showing exactly what we see during our meetings with a small and medium enterprises. At the first, they would prefer to robotize the applications around packaging and palletizing, machine tending, assembly and pick and place. What we see differently comparing the last years is that they are looking intensively at the areas where they could increase the social distancing, increase the hygiene during the production, perfectly producing the products without being touched by the operator. And some of them are looking also for the changes in the production to ensure that they will be able to keep the production running even uh, without a correct number of the operators available. Still, those customers are looking for a return on investment time frame, which is between six months to two years. To ensure that we will be able to help them with, uh, with that, we built with our distributors a network of system integrators and OEMs, which are able to prepare a turnkey solution for end user with a correct time frame and also at the price which will be acceptable by the end user because price is uh, a key and one of the most important factors in the decision-making process. To help also with that, uh, we prepare a solution with the leasing and credit for the robot arm, and a few of our partners in Poland decided to sell the system at a different way. They are selling the system uh, which will be paid per working hour of the robot, or the end user will pay for the product robot will produce. We do not want to forget that other parameters of the cobots like ease of use, versatility, quality, and also the extensive um, technical support we provide at Universal Robots have a higher value in decision-making process than the price itself. In Romania, from our discussion with customer, we see an increase of their interest in productivity per square meter in their facility about having a fast payback of their investment in collaborative robots and also reaching a higher degree of flexibility of their production in order to adapt to current changes. Regarding SMEs, technology is a driving factor of growth. By increasing productivity and also by being as efficient as possible. They see our cobots as a new technology in helping them reaching this goal, but in some cases they are not sure if they are ready or not to start with a collaborative robot. Due to the fact that majority of our customers in the country have a return of their robotization investment between 6 and 12 months, 
is helping the local entrepreneur in building up a business case and also in making a decision. In order to reach this fast payback, I see essential choosing the right application to start. By doing so, uh, usually the customer are contacting us, Universal Robots Romania team and our partners. Okay, now we are back and we are ready for your questions. You can you can ask the questions directly on uh, using a YouTube interface in the chat or in the case you do not have access to a chat or you don't have a Google account, you can send us your questions by email to an email address ceeuniverserobots at gmail.com. So once again, ceeuniverserobots, no spaces, no extra signs, at gmail.com. Com. And we already have some questions, so let's start with the first question we have received today and it's from Mr. Bartoszik from Automa. Uh, he's asking what are the most impo important factors for customers' decision to buy robots? If it's price, speed, accuracy, effective collaboration with operators, energy consumptions, environmental aspects, origin in the in, uh, European Union or, or different one? <laughs> it's, it's a good question. Uh, from, my, from my experience or from our experience, uh, it's none of these because for, uh, I, I see those aspects or decision points as a, uh, let's say, too technical why when uh, our customers are considering more uh, the benefits they can uh, they can get from or they can, they can gain from uh, using our robots or collaborative robots as such, like uh, flexibility of the application, speed of deployment, uh, return of investment or, or payback period. I think those are really the factors that are driving their uh, their consideration, not as not speed or accuracy. Uh, so, so, so I, I really see, and it, it's a kind of change that we, have, we are observing for past couple of years, where customers are really thinking more about the business benefits and financial benefits or the business aspects and impacts, rather than uh, uh, yeah, te technical details or technical parameters. Uh, another question from Mr. Bartoszik is what services do customers need and expect from a robot manufacturers or distributors? Design of workstation or product line, project management, financial services, including support for governmental subsidizing, commissioning, maintenance. Um, another, another challenging question or this is the, the, the discussing this, this, this question we can take two or three hours, uh, but make, making it short, uh, our concept or the concept that we have introduced as Universal Robots, it's called do it yourself. So we believe in simple, fast to deploy, fast to design applications where customers can even themselves without involving integrators or third party companies uh, can design, set up, implement their application in, in very short period, uh, in a matter of hours or in a matter of days. Uh, but definitely, uh, let's say more complex applications or if, uh, if customer doesn't have, let's say available uh, engineering power or uh, just want, want to outsource the, uh, the project, then yeah, definitely typical, uh, there, there is involvement of, of integrators as a, as a typical support for for the end customer projects. Mm -hmm. Some customers are using uh, financial services. We have introduced uh, cooperation with uh, leasing companies in Poland and in in, uh, in Hungary in our region. So so this is this is well adopted as well. And yeah. yeah, maybe I would like to add just one thing. It's that the the customers are not buying the robots to have the robot. They are buying the robot to solve some kind of challenge or some situation they need to solve. And to, to have the situation solved, they need the robot to do something. And uh, so they need to outsource what they are not able to do. 
But as Slavoj mentioned, uh, using our approach to robotics, which is collaborative, which means that it's not only robots can work with people, but also people can very easily work with robots, is that they are able to do a lot of things internally by themselves. So they do not need to outsource a lot of activities to external yeah. companies. And ju just uh, to add something to, to what Pavel has mentioned, this, this is also what we see with many customers, especially at the, at the small and medium uh, size companies, when for first one or two applications on installations, uh, system integrators are being involved to design and to, to, to help customer to deploy the applications and then uh, for, for the following projects or for the, for the changes of the applications or new implementations of, of additional robots, uh, robotic applications, customers are basically becoming self-sufficient. Yeah. So they are not only getting robot, but they are also learning new things, new techniques, they are getting new skills to the existing yeah. people, to the to the company. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I have a question from ATP Journal from Slovakia. Why the Slovakian market wasn't covered uh, in Robotization Barometer 2020? Do you have some similar results, numbers of SMEs from Slovak Republic? Uh, we we had to make the decision how to how to limit the market, and what we see that the Czech market and Slovak market are very showing very consistent, very, very similar results. Uh, so for us, we do not really see a big difference between, between Czech and Slovakian market. So we expect that the, the survey outcome would be about the same. Uh, there is just a little bit slighter, a little bit slight difference in the starting position where Slovakia is a little bit more dependent at the moment, if you are looking at the, at the penetration of robotization on big automotive accounts. But there is also a big number of, of uh, small and medium enterprises which are actually solving the same challenges as the companies that are located in, in the yep. Czech Republic, Hungary or Poland. Yep. So, so we, we have decided to, to perform this study or research in, in four selected countries and as Pavel has mentioned, Slovakia is, is very comparable with uh, results that we have received in, uh, or based on our experience, uh, we assume that the outcomes in Slovakia will be very similar to what we, what, what we have received from the survey in Czech Republic. Also the uh, ro ro robots density uh, or robotization level is very close uh, between Slovakia and, and Czech Republic that are both basically most robotized uh, countries in Central and Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. Uh, a little bit related question is coming from Mr. Trojan. Did you make similar research in Germany, for example? I'm interest, interested in differences between Czech Republic and Germany. Is it huge? So I'm not sure if we have done any research like that in Germany. To be honest, I, I, I don't know. Uh, but we, we can check that with our colleagues in Germany. Okay. Uh, so, so we will come back with the answer. Uh, uh, but. Uh, Germany or the robotization or the density of, of, of robots in Germany is even higher than in Slovakia and Czech Republic. Uh, and we see uh, when, you know, for, for, from our point of view, from our perspective, uh, the German uh, robotization in Germany is, is really running uh, with, with very high speed and it's highly, highly growing market for robots and, and for collaborative robots particularly. Yeah, if we are looking at the numbers that are coming from International Federation for Robotics, so in Germany everything is multiplied by a factor of two, uh, comparing to Czech Republic. So it's the uh, robots per capita is multiplied by two. The robots in, uh, uh, in automotive industry, uh, it's again multiplied yeah. by two in, in the Czech Republic. And the same is for non-automotive industry. So uh, we expect that this level of automation in small and medium companies uh, would be a little bit, little bit similar to the Czech Republic. They might just be solving a different challenges uh, based on the economical yeah. area they, they, they live in. Yeah, just, just to compare the numbers, I have the uh, latest IFR report in front of me. So the uh, number of installed robots in, uh, uh, in Germany per uh, 10,000 employees, uh, considering the, out, uh, the end of 2018, because we still do not have uh, official I IFR report for uh, 2019. 
So Germany, it's 338 robots per 10,000 employees, while in Slovakia, we see 165, and in Czech Republic, it's 135. So it's basically confirming what, what Pavel has mentioned. Uh, tricky question from Mr. Tracik. Uh, will COVID-19 have a significant impact on accelerating robotization among SMEs? Uh, yes, uh, I believe so. And the impact is, uh, from, from our, our, our standpoint of view, positive because uh, especially in, in our business where we are collaborative robots, uh, small and medium companies can very easily address a uh, number of challenges that uh, they have been facing even before COVID. But uh, with this COVID situation, uh, it, it emphasized uh, some challenges like uh, workforce flexibility, production flexibility, uh, uh, efficiency, of, of the production productivity so so all those all those things are right now really driving the the the, the way of thinking and and uh, let's say uh, decisions of of many customers from small and medium and we see increasing demand for for uh, robotization and for deployment of collaborative robots as the as the most efficient way for solving those issues or challenges Okay. Another question is coming. Uh, it's not related that much to universal robots, but partially it is. Uh, there, Slavoj, there is a growing interest in Europe for a mobile robots. Does UR have any relevant development in this area? Uh, <laughs> universal robots. We are part of the of Teradyne, and our sister company or second uh, other division of of Teradyne is uh, Mir and they are focused on mobile industrial robots. So, so it's, it's our sister company and it, it, it very well fits to the uh, strategy in, our strategy in collaborative robotics and also strategy of Teradyne for, uh, so we, we believe that those, those two types of robots are, let's say, complementing and, and supporting each other and very well connected as a, as a part of entire strategy of Teradyne. So the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, question from uh, Mrs. Blaschak from Rzeczpospolita. Uh, please explain why the share of SMEs considering robotization is slower than these considering cobots installation. It seems that cobots are a part of robotization anyway. Uh, I didn't get the question because I think the outcomes are slightly different mm -hmm. because we see higher demand for cobots than for, for robots as such, which means increasing demand for the collaborative robots mm -hmm. than uh, for traditional industrial robots. And this is basically confirming the trend that we see on the market and also that independent analysts or uh, research companies, or you, you, you can see it from the from the number of independent reports, that the market share of or growth of the collaborative ro robots market is significantly higher than the growth of uh, the robots, traditional industrial robots market. So, so collabor collaborative robots are increasing their share in the total, uh, let's say, robot robotics numbers or industrial robotics. Another question is coming from Mr. Gambetz. Uh, can you show us some examples of leaders? Which companies or sectors are leading in robotization? Yeah. The traditionally, uh, and you know, it's uh, it's I think well known. It's automotive. Automotive automotive industry is driving. Uh, let's say robotization. Uh, we see uh, high level of robotization also in the electronics, uh, but uh, increasing demand in the in the food and bath, in plastics, uh, wood and and wood products uh, productions, 
Yeah. So, 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 di so demand is uh, is uh, go going across all the industries, but the, as, as, as the question was related, who is the leader? It's definitely automotive and uh, electronics on at the second place. Yeah, I think it's also given by the fact that the automotive industry was the first one who started to implement yeah, yeah, all yeah, the yeah, yeah. all the automation uh, procedures, and you can you can really clearly see it. Uh, if I can again share the the check numbers. So if we are talking about the density of robots per 10,000 employees, uh, the, in, in automotive industry, it's uh, almost 500 robots per 10,000 employees. And in non-automotive, it's I think it's 56, 57. So you really see the big disproportion between, between those two. But what we also see is the really growing demand from a non-automotive industry. Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, then, from ATP Journal, uh, tell the results of the survey whether the SMEs plan to use the cobots really as a collaborative, together in one place with a person, or will be application without the close presence of the person? A, A is the correct answer. So, so, especially in the SMEs, we see very good adoption of the collaborative concept and collaboration between robots and, 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 and human workers. So, so uh, in, in the SME, it's, it's really about collaborative applications where people are working in the close proximity to the robots. What, what I can confirm from, uh, from our experience that it's mainly small and medium companies who are also using another benefit of, of collaborative robots and it's, it's mobility. I mean, because you can take a robot to do, for example, grinding for the morning shift and then take the robot for the afternoon shift and use it on a, on a different, uh, different workstation, for example, for, for packing the things he, he has grinded in the morning. Yep. So, yep. And uh, I would say those small and medium companies are much more flexible in using the benefits of, of the cobots. And of course, it's given by a little bit different structure of their uh, of their production. Yeah, and, and it's uh, I, I fully agree. Basically, it's driven by by the needs and by nature of small and medium companies because they need flexibility, and they need absolutely high level of of efficiency and uh, yeah and flexibility and the best utilizing the best from from both sides from the from the machine and from the from the people. So combination of, of those two is brings significantly higher productivity than uh, they can achieve just by using robot without uh, cooperation or collaboration with the human or if the tasks are performed just by humans. So combination of those two and collaboration of those two, how to name it, aspects or parts of the, of the, of the process or supporters of the process, robots and people are really, are really increasing the productivity and the efficiency. Yeah, and also need to say that it's uh, shortening the, the payback period of, of such a solution. Yep. Uh, another question from Mr. Gambetz. Is there any place for collaboration between companies and schools? Do they need people who can only use the robots or also people who are able to improve them and build a brand new robots? I'm not sure if I do understand the question correctly, but uh, universities, uh, as univer I can speak for universal robots, but what I see also other suppliers are closely cooperating with, with universities. Uh, and uni universities are very often driving the innovation or are, let's say, taking a part of the, of the innovation or in, in inventing new things. So uh, the, the universities definitely do play very important role in uh, developing or de developing the, the new ideas and new concepts. Uh, also, uh, un universities are, for example, using part of our training program that is called UR Academy online as a it's it's free set or available. It's, it's online set of, of, of courses and, and uh, different modules that universities are freely using for as a part of their uh, curriculum 
for, for their students. So it's the, the cooperation is not only in the, uh, the side of innovations or development or research, but also in the, in the, in the, uh, the education part of the, of the, let's say, yeah, of the universities or uh, teaching new, new people for robotization or automation or yeah, maybe we can also mention on this place that uh, Universal Robots was actually founded by three PhD students as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, meanwhile, uh, the Odense where uh, Universal Robots is based has become uh, uh, called Robotization Hub. So it's really a center of uh, robotization in Europe uh, centered around the, the yeah. university. Uh, so let me check another questions. Uh, I think we have we have a question from uh, uh, Mr. Yon Vachiu. I'm, I'm sorry if, if I spell your name wrong, uh, and it's related to the marketing, uh, so it should probably be answered by the by the marketing. But uh, since we don't have uh, our colleagues here, we have to do it by ourselves. What is the marketing plan to promote your services and devices in Eastern Europe? I don't see too many initiatives in educating and informing the Romanian market during the, the last year. Uh, I would rather take it as a feedback. And the uh, Romanian market is, is, is very important market for universal robots because we see, we see really high potential in Romania. And also our, our business in Romania is, is growing significantly in past couple of years. And uh, we do I, I'm honestly a bit surprised by this feedback because uh, uh, we have a feedback from a number of customers and, and partners and, and uh, also the other journalists that are appreciating what we are doing in, in a kind of promotion of collaborative robots concept and how we are, uh, uh, let's say, creating a kind of or increasing awareness of, of collaborative robots or robotization as such in Romania. But yeah, I take it as a feedback and we will work on it. Okay. So, seems that we have no more questions. Let me just check if I didn't omit any of those. So, no more questions, no more questions in, uh, in email either. So once again, I would like to remind you that after, the, the, after this press conference, you will receive an email with a link to a press pack where you will have a contact to all the local agencies and you will get more data on that. And if you have any additional questions related to a local, uh, to a country level, you will get those answers from our local agencies. So I would like to thank you for attending this press conference. It was uh, great to share our findings with you and I will ask Slavoj to have the final word. Yeah, basically from my side also, thank you for, uh, for participating on, the, on this conference, for, for nice questions or in some cases challenging questions that we appreciate as well. And uh, as, as Pavel mentioned, if you have any additional questions, demand for more information, feel free to let us know. And uh, we are looking forward to, to see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you.